I'm going to start with reading uh, Acts chapter 2, 1 through 13. And uh, it's not very long, but I want us to think about the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And I want to think of it as wanting an encounter with Him. An encounter. Not just learning about who the Holy Spirit is, but encountering the Holy Spirit and your life changes. So here you go. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 13. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were in all one place together. Hmm, we're in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house, which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, saying in Jerusalem, at this, at this sound they gathered at a large crowd, in a large crowd. But they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and amazed. They asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how do each one of them, each one of us, hear them in our own native language? We are Parthians, Medes, uh, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, uh, and Asia, Phagaria. I don't even know how to say that, but, but, but Pamphylia. I'm just trying, guys. I just love the Lord. Egypt and all the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as the travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues as the mighty acts of God. They were all astounded and bewildered and said to one another, what does this mean? But others were scoffing and they had too much, and they said they've had too much new wine. Can you imagine what that has been like? To be in a place where you see the Holy Spirit fall on people, people and tongues of fire, like fire hanging over people's heads. Like, I would have been like, dude, you're on fire. Like, stop, drop, and roll, bro. Like, I don't know what's going to happen to you. You're on flames. And he's like, no, man, I got something that I can't even explain. People thought that they were drunk. And they were like, no, man, I got the Holy Spirit. And, and I think when I was kind of growing into this and, and on my faith journey, I didn't, really didn't understand the Holy Spirit. So uh, I'm going to give a metaphor, and hopefully that, that can kind of help us out really understand what the Holy Spirit does for us. And I want to give the, the, the metaphor of a, an eagle flying. Did anybody know how, does anybody know how an eagle actually flies? I, I, I didn't, so I, I Googled it. <laughs> okay, so supposedly birds are born with everything they'll ever need to fly, right? They have these pec muscles that are like super huge. And then they have these, these wings and, and feathers, and so that will, that will allow them to, gu to glide, right? And so, okay, I'm understanding this. I'm, I'm reading Google. And um, what it says is there has to be wind and air present. If there is no wind, no air, an eagle cannot get lift. A bird cannot get off the ground. So a bird may start running or, or he may start flapping. But either way, he gets going, he starts flapping his wings, and he catches the air underneath his wings, and then he gets lift. And then when he's in the air, what the bird does is the wind comes over the wing and under the wing. Well, the wind that's going under the wing is so strong that it's pushing it up. And the way the feathers are made, that's how the eagle gets flight. And I was thinking about this in, in, in my room. And I was like, wow, what an amazing metaphor. Because we're the bird. You already have everything you need to fly. God's already put inside of you what you need to overcome obstacles. And all you need is the Holy Spirit. All you need is the, the wind underneath your wings. Because you got everything you need. 
Don't try to be somebody else. You be you. Be the best you you will ever be. Because God has made you that way. All we're missing is the wind underneath our wings. But, but then we come, up, we come up and you say, well, if I had the Holy Spirit like that, I wouldn't come up with, against these mountains that, that are gigantic, immovable. I can't, I can't look at these mountains. You know, there's this beautiful verse that says, say to the mountains, move, and they will move because you have the faith of a mustard seed. But some of us in here don't even have that faith of a mustard seed. So we're coming up against these mountains and these immovable objects. And we're saying, I can't tell that object to move. I can't tell that object of my parents divorcing to move. I can't tell my daddy who's addicted to alcohol, I can't tell that mountain to move. I can't tell that mountain of, of addiction to move, the addiction to drugs, pornography, sex, whatever it is that it may be. Lord God, that object is too big for me to tell to move. I don't believe it. I don't believe that mountain can move. That mountain of depression, that mountain of hating myself, of vomiting, making myself throw up, being too cocky. I can't tell those things to move. Those are things we all struggle with. I was sitting in my bed and I was writing this down about the wind underneath our wings. And the Lord moved me, prompted me to read Isaiah 40. And it blew my mind. It took me for a loop. I said, Lord, I'm not ex I wasn't even expecting this. The Holy Spirit just dropped the mic right on me. I was like, oh, Holy Spirit, thanks. Check this out. Isaiah 40, 26 says, lift up your eyes and look towards the heavens. So when you start feeling that you can't move the mountain, don't worry about it. Because you start flapping your wings of faith. You start to get, a, you get a running, a running, a, a jolt in your body. You start running towards God. You start flapping those wings of faith and keep flapping and keep flapping. Because at some point the Holy Spirit's going to catch on your wings and you will get flight. And you will get over that mountain. Don't feel like you have to move every mountain. Let the Holy Spirit take you over the mountain. I was reading Isaiah 40. It's the same, same exact place. Isaiah 40, verse 4 says, And every mountain and every hill will be made small. <laughs> what a confirmation. You don't have to move every obstacle in your life. Allow the Holy Spirit to move you over them. I kept reading, and the Lord's just like, he's giving me like the one-two punch, man. I'm like, Lord, I don't know if I can take any more of this. He's like, no, no, I got you. I got you, fam. That thing told me. So Isaiah 40, 29 to 31, check this out. Mm -mm -mm. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power in the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary. Young men stumble and fail, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. And they will soar on wings of eagles. <laughs> Give the Holy Spirit a hand clap. <laughs> you can imagine me in my bed crying my eyes out. I was like, whoa. Repeat after me. We will soar on wings of eagles. We will soar on wings of eagles. We will soar on wings of eagles. Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. Amen. Amen. God, preach.
to. Man, I just... <laughs> that was the Holy Spirit dab right there. That's what the Holy Spirit is, man. He's your lover. He's your defender. He's your advocate. He goes to fight for you. That's who we have on our side. But can I tell you a secret? Here, come, come closer. Right there, that's, that's enough. Receiving gifts from the Holy Spirit should be the normal. This should be the normal. We, we, we should walk into to the, the grocery store and someone passes by us and the Holy Spirit should speak to us and say, hey, you need to go talk to that person right now. You need to go tell them that I love them. That should be the normal. That's normal Christianity. That's normal Catholicism. That's normal. I remember I was, I love telling stories, but they're all true, I promise. I was, I was at my house and I was in my garage and there was some guy who was working at, on the house across from us. And so he peeks in, in my garage and I have some workout stuff in my garage. And he goes, oh, hey, man, I like to work out too. I said, oh, that's awesome, dude. T tell me a little bit about yourself. He goes, well, you know, I'm, I'm working on this house across the street. And, you know, uh, man, you know, I just, I, I just, I just, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm meant for good things. I said, yeah, man, you know what, I believe you, dude. I said, uh, you know, do you feel like you're going to do something like really, really big in your life? And he was like, yeah, man. He goes, oh, I'm a good salesman. He goes, I know people, man. I, I know how to talk to them. I can sell them anything, man. I said, that's awesome, bro. I said, hey, let me ask you a question. He said, yeah, what's up? I said, have you ever sold hope? He goes, what? I said, have you ever sold hope? He's like, I don't, I don't know what you mean. I said, man, let me tell you, I'm a Catholic evangelist, man. I get to go around just preaching the good news. I get to go out and just, just love on people, man. Love God and love on people. That's all I do. And I said, you should see the look in someone's eye when they meet hope. When they meet the peace that surpasses all understanding. I said, it'll make anything else you sell, like, worthless. Because what I see every day in your eyes is priceless. That's how much, that's what the Holy Spirit does for us. It should be normal that we go up to people and tell them, I just love you. I know what's weird, but I love you. I was at the gym just the other day, and I told some guy, I had, I had to walk up to him. I'd been seeing him the whole time. He cleans the place. I said, hey, man, people pass by you all the time. They don't even say hi to you. I said, but I need to know you. And I told him, look, I don't know what's going on in your life, man, but I just need you to know that I'm, I'm here for you, man. If you need prayer, just come get at me. He was like, hey, man, I appreciate that. And he didn't have to say anything else. He didn't have this huge conversion that I know of, but I don't need to see it. All I'm called to do is plant those seeds. Holy Spirit waters it. Father God sons it. And later on, we see the plantation of love. That's what it's about, man. That's what the Holy Spirit does for us. The Holy Spirit gives power. That's what we're going to be receiving in just a little bit. And with power comes freedom. I love what it says here, 2 Corinthians 3. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Break us free from these chains, Lord, that have been keeping us attached to, to this wall, this dungeon. I'm ready to get out. I'm ready to spread my wings. I'm ready to fly and soar above every mountain and every hill and every valley. I'm ready. Lord, give me that. That should be our prayer. In just a little bit, we're going to do some Holy Spirit stuff. And oh man, I'm so excited just to know what's going to happen in y'all's lives. You might not even see it for years. But I know it's going to happen. So this is what's going to happen. It, it, the Holy Spirit's going to come and you're going to have power. But there's something about power. It, it, th there, there's, there's something that goes along with that. If you don't use power, what good is it? If the Holy Spirit comes and touches you, and you receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and you keep them to yourself, you're doing a just, just, uh, an injustice to the world.
When you receive the power, you have to go out and use it. Right now it's easy. We're loving each other and we're here and we're in all in one accord and we're saying, Jesus, I love you. And the person next to us saying, Jesus, I love you too. And, and, but when we get out there, when we go back home, it ain't like Jesus loves you all the time. It doesn't feel like that, but your feelings will betray you. I'll tell you that right now. It's the trust that we need to have. Father, I don't, I don't feel God all the time. That's just honesty. I don't. But I trust him all the time. And that's the difference. That's the difference when you're in your low points and you're like, man, I don't have that high of student bill. You don't need to. He's still there. Trust him. To give you an idea here, if, if, if you don't turn a water hose on, it will not spout water. That sounds, sounds pretty logical, right? If, if you don't turn on an oven, it will not cook. Pretty logical, right? If you don't use the Holy, Spout, the Holy Spirit that you get, what good is it going to do? Go out. Change the world. And if you can't change the world, change somebody's world. And, and the thing is, I love this. I didn't come up with this. Jesse Duplantis did. But I love it. He says you got to doubt the doubt. Because Satan will come into your mind. And he'll say, you can't go do that. You can't change somebody's life, but you have to doubt the doubt. Because see, once you doubt the doubt, you're going to be in doubt about the doubt because you've done doubt of the doubt. Did you, did, you, did you get that? So when the doubt comes against you, right, Satan says, I doubt you can do that. You have to say, well, I doubt your doubt. And the devil's like, you, you can't doubt my doubt. I, I'm, I doubted you. And you're like, yeah, but I just doubted your doubt. So now I'm not in doubt about the doubt because I've done doubt of the doubt. You got that? So this is, what, this is what I want us to do in a second. Um, I'm going to have us all stand up in a minute. And before you do, um, I'm going to have us uh, close your eyes. And I'm going to have you raise your hands in a minute. Not yet. Um, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to say hallelujah three times together. But we're going to shout it, man. We're going to shout hallelujah like we have never shouted before. We're going to shout hallelujah so loud. That the devil's gonna shake in the pits of hell. He will be scared by what he hears coming out of this place right now. So we're gonna do that. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We're gonna do that three times as loud as you can. And at that point, I just need you to just talk to the Lord out loud with your words. Just tell him that you, whatever you need to tell him. Maybe it's you need to say, I, I love you. Maybe it's, Lord, I'm suffering. Maybe the Holy Spirit gives you the utterance to speak in a different tongue. Don't be surprised if someone gets healed tonight. Don't be surprised if miracles happen tonight. Because we serve the Father of miracles. And the Holy Spirit will be here. Whether you feel it or not, He's going to be here. Are y'all ready to receive some power? Are you ready to receive some firepower? I love it. So let's go ahead and stand up. And Paul's going to come up here in a minute, and the, and the rest of the band's going to come up in a little bit, and they're going to keep leading you. But uh, if, if you need to, to just, if you just need to cry it out, if you need someone to come and pray with you, we have our, our ushers, our beautiful servants here that have been serving you. They're going to come and pray with you. But guys, you got to use it once you get it. Don't leave here and shove that down in your suitcase. Wear it on your sleeve. 